You are watching the Hook vs. TLO grudge match cast by myself, Total Biscuit. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Shoutcraft, bringing you the little one in the purple trunks now playing Zerg, because, you know, he's got the Starcraft equivalent. Oh, oh yes, those extra wings, they are terrifying. I didn't know what they were. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Oh, God, he's hacking. <laughs> I see, I even said that before you said that, it's wonderful, I have this kind of precognitive force, whatever the case. Yes, TLO has the StarCraft equivalent of ADHD, he loves to switch between different factions. It's great, really, really good. You'll notice that the Zerg coming up right there, this is the first time he's played Zerg in this particular set of matches versus his opponent in the red trunks, the one and only Huck, who takes back that particular game. I don't even know if you actually noticed this because the massive battle was going on at the time, but Hawk's micromanagement there was pretty much bang on perfect, even to the point of him managing to feed back the Raven in the fight. See, I told you, see, he says it as well. It does look like a bloody Gundam. The anime Thors, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what they are. But yeah, he feedbacked that Raven so rapidly, it wasn't even funny. So Raven, da 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 da, bam! Just out of nowhere. It was really, really great. I said I didn't point that out because it was so intense, but hey, you gotta notice those kind of things, folks. It's great to be able to watch it. It's why in replays like this, you probably watch like two, three, four, five, maybe even six times. Why not six times, folks? Why not? Mm. Uh, uh, yes. It is a bit of a team grudge match, folks, but bear in mind that they are best of friends. Of course, they are both over in Europe right now for the Assembly Tournament, which I will be casting some of in support of GLHF TV. They're the main casters. I will be casting the events that they are not able to cast. Right now, TLO with the fast expansion there on 14 supply. However, Huck is going to counteract that with his forge and, of course, his cannon strategy. TLO, what are you going to do about it? You know, it's a little bit more difficult to repulse when he's the Zerg. There's no question about that. He was able to go with the double gateway on the second game to repulse that, but that's not going to happen this time. There's the cannon coming up right there. Will TLO be forced to cancel out of it? It is a possibility. Bear in mind, cannons don't kill hatcheries that fast. I mean, they do 20 damage. It's going to take a while for it to actually kill it. It is a possibility they'll be able to surround and deal with it. Uh, TLO with a scouty scouty. Yes, indeed. We've got two probes off the line there, and of course, two of those. TLO with the early second expansion. Huck with the early second cannon. Okay, that is smart. There you go. Cancelling straight out of that and straight into this one. He's going to be juggling his way between these two. Looking very likely. Still no spawning pool right now for TLO, but his ex actual economy is going very, very well indeed. Huck doesn't actually have any effect offensive units right now. So, I don't know, TLO might just keep doing this. Oh, I'm gonna build this, because bear in mind what he's forced his opponent to do. This is the, you might think, well, why did he do that? And he's got another expansion coming up over here. Of course he is, it's the little one. Now, you might wonder, well, why did he do that? Surely that's bad. No, it isn't, because look what he's forced Hook to do. Hook can't cancel the photon cannon, and he can't cancel the pylon. That's 250 minerals worth of stuff spent. Now 350, and now, there you go. 500 minerals, and then TLO can cancel straight out of that if he wants to. He's forced his opponent to build 500 minerals that have effectively done absolutely nothing. That is really great. That is fantastic play there by TLO. Very creative. And now we're looking for the spawning pool and the gas. And his actual expansion is all the way over there. Oh, uh, Hook has no idea. Oh, God, he's got another one. <laughs> this is fantastic. Look at this. It's brilliant. Hook once again. With the pilot. Oh no, my battle net connection has been lost. Good job. We're not doing this live, folks. I hope that I haven't lost any other connection. We will see. Oh, wow. In the meantime, TLO. TLO. That's a great strat. It really is. Hawk once again with the cannons. Forcing so much minerals. So many freaking minerals into that. And right now, TLO's just playing pretty damn casually. He isn't too worried about it. Hook with the three right there, and his actual expansion is all the way over here, so he really doesn't actually care all that much. Nail it down. Bring it down. He's gonna... Oh, he's gonna take that pylon out. Yes, he is. Can he cancel the pylon before he... Yes, he can. There you go. And Hook, huge amount of units that now are pretty much useless. Pylons. So many pylons. You must construct additional pylons, Hook. 
Uh, Hawk has absolutely no offensive units of any description except for a single zealot right now. Where is that zealot? It's streaming across the map to try and deal with the harassment that's done right there. There's the cancel. And finally, those cannons are. But so much money invested in doing that. And that's not even where his real expansion actually is. TLO expands over there. What's the economic impact of this, however? TLO's slightly behind. He's going to have to try and apply pressure elsewhere. Units-wise, he doesn't have an awful lot. He's got those two queens. So, again, doesn't have to worry about that too much. TLO with another expansion all the way to the bottom of the Shakurai's Plateau. Fancy stuff, folks. Fancy stuff. Hawk has still not spotted that one. Zealot getting forced away very easily there. Zergling's now on the field. Queen's available as well. We may see more queens, folks. We may indeed see more than one queen. Hawk switching it up right now with a Stargate. Mmm, tasty. Stargate plus two gateways right here. Oh, got to love the diversity, folks. Absolutely wonderful. A variety pack. In the meantime, TLO is going to take some of these cannons out. Why not? So we can start expanding to the other areas of the map. These pylons could be useful, admittedly, for warping in proxy units. But right now, we're not seeing any of that because he's focusing more on the Stargate. Make sure he has the money for it. Evolution Chamber coming up right here for TLO. Clears out one of them. And right now, he's actually sitting on 21 Zerglings. He's up against a single sentry and a single... Zealot. Oh, yes. Has an awful lot available here. Yes, he does. TLO with those Zerglings out right there. And he has a huge amount of them as well. Can he swarm around? Of course he can. He'll lose a couple, but no big deal. Photogaz not all that affected with dealing with that. And, of course, he takes a pile on. No problems whatsoever. And that's a lot of damage now done to Huck. Bear in mind that TLO has had to cancel out a bunch of those hatcheries. But it didn't really lose anything, per se, there. Except the... Uh, drones that we used because they got shot to pieces. Huck with the photon cannons all over the place. And yes, he finds another expansion, but he still hasn't spotted this one. In the meantime, got to have a run and see what he can do, which is not an awful lot, as you can see. huck has got two sentries out. He's playing nice and defensively. And Void Ray's on the way out for Huck. A single one on the field. The question is, where is it? More to the point. There you go. Working on that expansion over there for TLO. TLO's not, of course, going to be able to cancel that. It's already up. Nothing you can really do there. But that expansion rolling pretty nicely. And a Spore Crawler coming up right there just to make matters even worse for Hawk once he rolls in with those Void Rays. And his ex... This is more important right here. He actually has a fully active second expansion. He's plowing resources into drones, no problem whatsoever. Two queens on the field, a third one available, and teching up to Lair. A amazing strategy, honestly, from TLO. Very, very impressed with that. Actually tricking his opponent into wasting a bunch of minerals and resources early on so that he can get himself a secret expansion and get an awful lot of control in the process. In the meantime, however, bear in mind that those Void Rays are going to be harassing all over the place. Spore Crawler is available right there. That one is toast, no question, but it's only one Void Ray, so I don't expect too much. But bear in mind, great amount of micromanagement there from Hawk charging up the beam. Can he take the Evolution Chamber out before he gets the upgrade? It's looking pretty damn likely. If he brings that down, that's going to be a complete kick in the teeth right there for TLO. TLO tries desperately to stop it, but he could take it. He could take it. About five seconds, maybe. Five seconds left on the research. Four, three, two, one. Okay, maybe not one, but he's going to get it, folks. He's going to get it. Great transfuse there by TLO as well. Keeps the Spore Crawler alive and completes the research. Nicely done right there. In the meantime, what are we looking at in terms of those Zergis? Tons of units all over the place. He's got 34 Zerglings on the field. Spire is on the way. Has it been scouted by his opponent? I do not believe that it has because it's hidden all the way back there. No problem whatsoever. Once again, takes a run at the line, but great force field placement there by Huck. Bear in mind that all force fields have to be amazing. So says the Infested Archon's casting guide. Every force field is awesome, regardless of whether or not it is actually bad. So just bear that in mind. I will be making sure that I point out that every force field is amazing. In the meantime, Huck pushing forward right here with the Void Rays. Nothing that his opponent can really do about that. Losing Zerglings left, right, and center. Going to be Forced back there, but that base is pretty well defended. We've got a spore crawler up looking for another. Reese deploys right there. Plus, he's got that queen, so he should be pretty safe right there. Hawk sitting up there with more cannons than you can shake a stick at. Doesn't really need to worry about anything else right now. But bear in mind, of course, that he has fallen behind in terms of his army count and his economy is lagging behind TLOs as a result of that early game nonsense. Void Ray is a huge threat, no question about that. But once the mutalists get in the air, things are going to change rather rapidly. 
That's what we're looking for right here. Mutalisks almost up, and once they do, oh yes, it's going to be fantastic. Bear in mind, oh, he's also got that level 1 ground carapace upgrade, which is actually becoming increasingly more popular now for the Zerg. Very nice. It works pretty damn well, and of course, it does work pretty awesomely against Void Rays. Void Rays fire very quickly, but they do a fairly low amount of damage in the process, so it takes an awful lot longer for that to actually happen. TLO coming in right there with the Mutalisk. He's going to have to focus fire down. Can he bring down one? He looks for it. Yes, he's going to grab it. He's going to grab it. He takes it nicely, and now Liquid Hook force all the way back. That is lethal. That is devastating. As you can see, three taken down, fourth one taken down. Queen's out there just for a little bit of moral support. Cheerleader right there. Yay! Go Mutalisks. And in the meantime, we've got a swarm, a swarm of Zerglings moving out. Bear in mind that Hook has also expanded all the way over here. Just because, hey, he's got some cannons down. He might as well make use of one. There's the charge right into the lines right here. Will Hook be able to hold it? Of course he will. It's awesome force field placement. It's the best force field placement in the world. Yes, it is. Wonderful force fields, yes. And, well, it is. It stops the Zerglings from getting, and that's kind of important. In the meantime, there are 64 Zerglings on the field. What else is coming out? We've got Zerg, a flyer attack, level 1 upgrade coming in. Another expansion. This would probably be TLO's ninth expansion this game. Admittedly, most of them didn't reach fruition, but if at first you don't succeed, try expanding again. And out comes the Roland, Roland Force of oh, the one and only Liquid Hook. He's got 10 Zealots, 6 Stalker, and 6 Sentry. But it could be very easily surrounded and taken out, and of course the Mutalisks are an ever-present threat. He's going to have to watch out for that. Harass but not actually coming in right now. TLO using them as a fire support unit as opposed to a harassment unit. Nothing necessarily wrong with that. That works pretty damn well. Zergling and Mutalisk is reasonable. No question about that. Provides an awful lot of firepower. And the best thing I think maybe about that is the ability to surround your opponent, keep them in one place, and of course then take advantage of the bouncing effects of the uh, Mutalisk. Get a nice big ball of things that you can maximize your damage and wear them down. 75 Zerglings now on the field. 10 Mutalisks available. The flight of Mutalisks, where is it? Well, not really anywhere else, if I'm totally honest. No big damage done there. Nothing to really worry about. No harassment with this at all yet. Lots of pylons coming down for Hook. Pylons are always nice. We like pylons. Bailing less for TLO as well. Oh yes. Gotta love those bailings. 89 Zerglings on the field, folks. That is a good number. No question about that. Mutalisks coming in from the side. Are they going to be able to get any harassment done? That's the uh, big question right here. Can we kill a pylon? They have the level 1 weapons upgrade. Actually, they don't. Not quite timed correctly for that one, but takes one Stalker, takes two. Loses a bunch of Mutalisks in the process, though. Doesn't even take that second one. It's so very, very low. Not necessarily an advisable move there against Liquid Hook's Stalker Force. Now, TLO forced backwards once again. He's got 10 of those in the field. Infestation pit coming up again. Could mean infestors, could mean hive. Hive would be a great idea right now. Ground carapace level 2 coming up as well. And we could expect to see a mass morph of banelings. Did he actually cancel that? I believe he did. I think he did cancel out of the baneling nest. I'm going to check that that is the case. Where, oh, where is your baneling nest? You don't have one. Yes, indeed. He canceled out of the baneling nest. Interesting stuff. Well, I assume that was in reaction to what he scouted right there. He wants that pylon. He needs that pylon. He hates that pylon. One pylon down. A victory. A very small victory for the Mutalist Army. More concerned about what's coming in right here. Swarming around the side. And in this case, oh, there you go. It is a smash and grab situation. Hawk, indeed, with great force field placement right there, takes a bunch for free. Oh, yes, it's good. It's very good. Mutalists wheel around the side to see if they can get an angle, but they can't right now. In the meantime... Hmm. Where is he nibbling away? I hear the sounds of nibbling. Where is the nibbling? There is the nibbling. Looks for a few more avenues of attack. Yes, that will be a smart move. Open up some potential avenues there. Hawk just sitting on, well, whatever the hell he wants right now. And a hive coming up for TLO. Glial reconstitution upgrade for roaches. Now, you might think, roaches? Why is it going roaches? It's actually becoming increasingly more popular, this mid-game to late roach use. I mean, we're 18 minutes into the game now, and we're now finally seeing roaches. Yeah, it is actually becoming more popular for the Zerg, and it works pretty damn well. hawk has got the High Templar rolling out, though. Admittedly, I would be concerned if we see Roach Broodlord rolling, because that's going to be brutal. Hawk has a massive force, though. If you have a look at the size of the army count, he's still a little bit behind TLO. TLO's got 80 Zerglings on the field, Roach is rolling out, and, of course, 11 Mutalisks. Nothing to really worry about there. I have to wonder if he's actually going to go for that, because he's got no Corruptors out yet, so it's possibility the Broodlord will not come out. Infestors on the way. Yeah. What a wonderful variety pack right there. Three Photon Cannons coming up right here to support that. But you'll notice that TLO is still expanding pretty damn well. Doesn't have to worry about it. He's got three fully operational bases. 
Oh dear, Mutilus gonna get Oh yes, it's a good blink. It's very good. Takes a few for free, no problem whatsoever. All the way into the base right now, but that is well guarded. There is an angle of attack though, as you can see, out of the range of that. Huck pulls back immediately, loses a single probe, nothing to really worry about. But bearing in mind that Huck is also having to pull all of his units back, and I have to wonder if this is actually a diversion. Keep an eye on that minimap, folks. We might see some nonsense coming forward from TLO pretty damn shortly. Roaches on the field, and a good number of them as well, with the level 2 carapace upgrade. That is a potent, potent amount of armor. Infestors available as well. No neural parasite, don't really need it. There's the adrenal glands, folks, and the ultralisk cavern is on its way. Intriguing stuff. With the infestors, the ultralisk will be extremely effective. Of course, you're looking for the lockdown right there. Make sure you don't catch me around. But look at that, force field placement is absolutely superb. And literally it is at this point in time. Hook, perfect landing with that. Absolutely perfect landing. Takes out a bunch of units for free with no problems whatsoever. However, roach firepower now being inflicted on the front lines of Hook, and he's in a little bit of trouble right there. But a great box in, a wonderful box in, and a side storm to flush it down. Yes! Huck takes him to the cleaners right there, and an Archon on the way as well. Infesta drops it to try and lock it down. Doesn't get it, though. Bear in mind, there are four Ultralisks on the way. If he can hold the line until those Ultralisks come down and combine that with Neural Parasite, it could be absolutely critical. Again, having to attack to a narrow corridor, exploited fully by Huck, doesn't miss a beat, and nailing those force fields down very well. Tielo once again pushed back. Units-wise, TLO has lost almost double that of Huck. Huck is doing an incredibly good job right there of being extremely economical with his units. The force field placement is the critical element of his particular strategy, but there are Ultralisks rolling out, folks. Yes, they are. They are rolling out in large numbers. Are we seeing the upgrade for them? No, we are not. Not seeing that Chitinous Plating upgrade. And, yeah, it's great. It's a really nice upgrade, especially against Terran. But there you go. Four Ultralisks. Mmm. What a delicious mix. Can TLO turn the tables? Right now, you'll notice that Hook has been exploiting the fact that he can bar the mobility of the Zerg player. Can the Zerg turn it around and bar the mobility of the Protoss? That could be critical. Bear in mind, he does have Blink. He'll be able to get his Stalkers out of there. There's the roll. And we're looking for the lockdown right here. Big Storm on the Roaches. Roaches absorb most of that. Looking for Fungal Growth. Looking for the Fungal Growth lockdown. Oh, yes, indeed. Ultralisks force their way through there, but it's just not enough. Hawk with a hallucination as well there, just to make matters even worse. Bear in mind, Archons are now on the field, pushing his way through the forces of TLO. TLO now running for the hills, running for his life. Hook forcing his way forward. That expansion of a grim threat right now. Ultralists all the way through there, and a two-pronged attack. Can we get it with the Infestors? He's looking for the Fungal Growth. There you go, locks it down right there. And the Ultralists forcing their way in, but a lot of focus firepower coming in from the Stalkers. It's very, very good indeed, and of course, using those hallucinations to great effect. Mm, TLO has no idea right now. He has no idea. He doesn't have an overseer out. He has no idea what's a hallucination and what isn't. He'll notice that he's actually focusing fire on immortals that don't really exist. Great play there by Huck with the late game hallucination. Great to see that coming out on the field and Huck looking very strong right now. Anyone who had any doubts in Huck over the first two games, I hope you are eating a rather large slice of humble pie right now. Huck pulling out the innovative play using the hallucinations. Great force field placement across the board. Use of the Archons as well. Surprised to see no mothership, folks. Surprised to see no mothership, but there you go. And we're not seeing any corruptors, indeed. All broodlaws coming out for TLO. TLO sitting on a bunch of ultralists that right now are actually not doing all that much. They keep getting nailed down very easily by TL by Hook. Hook is able to obstruct them with the force fields, but bear in mind that ultralists can break them. So we'll have to see just how effective that is really going to be. It depends really on where they are. Because the problem you can have is the Ultralisks are so freaking big, you can end up blocking off your own units. A little bit problematic. They also take up a huge amount of screen space. TLO with a Corruptor. Are we looking for Greatest Spy? Yes, we are. Zerg Ground Carapace, level 3. And Huck is quite sick of this by the looks of it because he got the Warp Prism in. He's even upgrading Gravetic Drives, which is not something we usually see. But hey, there you go. Psy Storm annihilates that wave of zerglings and there's a good lock down there but is it going to be enough it is not once again it is not good enough as big focus fire is coming in right there but that's a huge amount of investors there by tlo might make the difference evidently not doing so once again throws them back throws them back Extremely effective play there once again by hook doing extremely well there force fields now not so much of a factor Oh, dear, dear TLO. Everybody makes mistakes. Don't worry about it. Hook forcing his way through right there. And that expansion is, well, pretty much toast, honestly. Have a look at it. You're not seeing anything right now other than Zerglings. Zerglings everywhere. Broodlords are rolling out right now. TLO 
Oh, we're gonna just bypass that entirely by the looks of it. Hey, it's a free immortal. Grab it, grab it, nibble it, bite it, bite its legs off. You know you want to. There's the surround. And he actually managed to get away. No way. There you go. In the meantime, his opponent forcing his way through. And that expansion is absolutely toast. Get out to fall back right now, though. Infestors backed up by the Roaches and the Zerglings breaking their way through there. A side stop clears out most of those Zerglings. A lockdown with the Infestor Fungal Growth. But now the Infestors are in the middle of nowhere. Oh, dear. No support right here. Those Infestors are going to be taken out with not a hope in the world. Hog once again taking massive toll. God damn. God, look at this. A 12,000 resource difference right now. Hook playing incredibly economically against his opponent. 85 units lost for Hook. 410. Oh, yes. 410 for TLO. Wants to take that Arcan out. He takes the Arcan out. Must be feeling pretty happy about that. But there you go. TLO gives it up. He knows he cannot face the might of Hook's force right here. It just could not be stopped. And a great play. An equalize right there to all in this best of seven series.